If you're familiar with my work, you'll know that lighting's a big part of my photos, and one of my go-to lightings is using spotlights. Obviously, this is one of my most asked questions as well, is how do I get my spotlight look? And most of you will be surprised to know that I don't actually use a spotlight, I use a different method to get this look. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I do to get my really cool spotlight look. So if this is something that interests you, make sure to watch the entire video so you don't miss out on any of the details. Before we start this video, obviously make sure you subscribe and like, it really does help this channel grow. And we've just hit 3,000 subscribers, which is huge. Thank you to every single one of you that does subscribe. It means the world to me. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into this video and let me show you guys how I get my spotlight look. The things you're going to need for this look are going to be a projector, a laptop, and then my digital asset pack, or you can just make your own screen assets. I'll explain what those are, will be used for in a second, but those are the only three things you will need for this spotlight look. If you guys see any of my work that uses spotlights, you'll notice that most of the time the spotlight's the only light that's going. And this is just so it doesn't compete with my other lights for brightness and it really helps outline the subject that I'm lighting. Like I said, the first thing you're going to need is a projector. Make sure that when you're choosing a projector, you make sure you get one that's very, very bright. The reason I say this is because you wanna have as bright of an image as possible so you have the choice to dim it if you want. If you have a very dim projector, you're only gonna get so far with it because you're gonna be limited by how bright the projection can actually get versus if you get a very bright one, the brightness level will be a lot more workable and it's going to allow you to get more out of the projector itself. The projector that I use is rated at 2,500 lumens, so that's a really good place to start. Honestly, if I could, I would get one that's a little bit brighter because sometimes it hasn't been bright enough but for the most part I can make it work. But I would highly avoid those very cheap projectors that you can get on Amazon for like a hundred bucks. Invest a little bit more money to get a higher quality projector because I promise you it'll be worth it and you can use it for a lot more things. I'll be making more videos on how you can use a projector for lighting, but they're a good investment and they're always a lot of fun to have, especially if you have a good one. Once you have your projector, you're also gonna need a laptop. The reason you need a laptop is because with a laptop it's how you're actually going to get the image of a circle onto the projector because with the projector itself obviously it's just a screen being projected onto whatever you're pointing it at so you're going to want a laptop or a chromecast or some kind of way to get the image that i'm going to show you guys in a second onto the projector to actually shoot the spotlight i like to use my laptop because it's just super easy i just set it on top of my projector and then from there i can mess around with it as much as i want i can change the scale i can change the size i can change the color i can do all those things from my laptop my laptop's touchscreen so it just makes it super easy but if you guys have like a Chromecast, you can just use Google Photos and do it that way. But I found that sometimes you lose connections and it's just a lot more hassle than it has to be. But using a laptop is going to be the easiest way to get the image onto the projector. The third thing that I mentioned that you're gonna need and the reason you need it is going to be my digital asset pack. This is going to provide all the shapes that you need to project onto your subject. Obviously you don't just have to use a circle. This is the beauty of using a projector. You can obviously just create your own digital assets uh, on Photoshop or get just a blank image on the internet. But if you guys want the ones that I use, I'll have the links in the description as well. I have them formatted to different formats because different projectors have different um, actual formats. So I'll have all those included in the description below. Now let me show you guys how to actually set everything together to get the spotlight effect. The first thing you're going to do is obviously turn your projector on. Make sure that it's fully turned on and it's at full brightness. Mine takes about a minute to do this. So when I'm turning it on is usually when I'm hooking up my laptop just so that by the time it's hooked up, it's completely ready to go. When I'm hooking up my laptop, I use an adapter that helps me convert my laptop's screen onto the projector. You can get these on Amazon or Best Buy for pretty cheap. I use a USB-C to HDMI because my laptop doesn't actually have an HDMI port. Some older laptops have HDMI ports, some don't. Make sure to get whatever adapter you need. I'll link some in the description. I'll link a HDMI to VGA or whatever it needs. My projector is a little bit older, so I actually needed to convert my USB-C to HDMI and then from HDMI to VGA because it is older, it doesn't have an HDMI cable, but newer projectors should come with an HDMI cable, which will eliminate that step. But once you have your laptop hooked up to your projector, all you need to do is open up my digital asset pack and then open up the circle. And then from there, you can just adjust the throw on the projection and boom, that's honestly all you need to do to get the spotlight effect. This is what I've been using. This is what I've been doing for the longest time. And for some reason, a lot of people are just super curious and I just thought that this was something that was readily known, but I guess not. One thing you need to keep in mind when you're shooting your spotlight at, at people is make sure you defocus it a little bit because it, depending on what kind of projector you have, you, you don't want the image to be super sharp. You don't want the image to be in focus because when it's in focus, you'll be able to see the little pixels and those will actually come up in the photos themselves. 
and there's almost no way to get rid of that. So just defocus it beforehand so that you don't have to worry about actually seeing the pixels. So what I like to do is I like to focus it so I can see the pixels and then just defocus it enough so that the pixels are gone. This will maintain the shape while making sure the pixels aren't actually being shown. This is really, really big. I messed up on that once and um, I, when I got to the editing process, I noticed that all the pixels were there and a lot of the images that were going to be really, really cool just kind of got ruined because you could see like a grid of pixels on the model's face and it just wasn't it. So save yourself the hassle, make sure you defocus before you start shooting. Otherwise you will see the pixels depending on what projector you get. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of doing this method over getting an actual spotlight. Obviously there are some pros with doing this over a spotlight. And the main pro that I can think of is the flexibility on what you're projecting. You can project shapes, you can project different colors, you can project images, moving images. You can do essentially whatever you can put on a screen, you can put on a projector and blast that onto your subject. Because of this, I think it's a lot more appealing for like creative style photos and not so much like technical photos, if that makes sense. And I really enjoy using this to project different colors and different shapes and stuff like that with my haze because it just gets a really cool effect and it's something that you wouldn't be able to do as easily with a spotlight. The second pro to this is having the ability to have a keystone. So with the projector, it doesn't have to be dead on to be a perfect circle. You can move it a little bit off to an angle and it'll crack itself and still project a perfect image, which is super cool, which means that I can shoot directly in front of my model and have the projector slightly off to the side and it'll still be a perfect circle and not some weird oval situation, which I don't know if, if spotlights can do that or, or not. If you guys have a spotlight, let me know in the comments if they can keystone or not, but that's something that's very beneficial about having a projector is you can shoot at an angle and not have to worry about the image being distorted. Um, obviously different versions and different models have higher leeway with keystones. Some have better keystone than others, but you know, Keystone is a keystone and most projectors have a decent amount. Usually they have like 15%. But the final pro of having a projector instead of a spotlight is it's multi-purpose. You can use it for photos, you can use it for videos, you can use it for movie night, you can use it to game on. You can do a whole lot more with it than just a spotlight. With a spotlight, you're using it for lighting, for photography, and that's it. With a projector, I can use it for movies. You know, I can use it for movies to game on, party night, whatever. It has multiple purposes more than just being a spotlight. So. One of the main cons about this is the color of the projection isn't true white. Obviously a projector is just a screen that's being blown up. And because of the screen, there's, there's a bunch of RGB pixels in there and it's hard for them to actually create pure white. One thing that I have noticed when shooting in the spotlight is there's always a tint to it. It's slightly blue or purple tint and it's almost impossible to get rid of. So one of the biggest cons of this method over an actual spotlight is the quality of the color coming from the projection. It isn't always gonna have the highest CRI or have the most color accuracy. So you're gonna need to understand that before you go ahead and do this method. But honestly, for a lot of the work that I do, it doesn't really matter. It's not like I need picture perfect. And a lot of it I can correct in post, but what I can't, you know, it's not the end of the world. That's one of the biggest cons. The second con is just how unergonomic it is. A projector is like a square and it's like a very odd shape. So I usually just set it up on a bench, but it's a lot harder to work with than an actual spotlight that you can just hook up to like a tripod or like a, a C stand or something and kind of put it wherever you want. With a projector, you can't really do that because you have your projector and then you have your laptop and then you need a way to keep both of them together, which requires wires. And then you have to make sure that whatever you're putting it on is stable enough to hold everything because projectors are heavy and then so is your laptop. And it's a lot less ergonomic and a lot less efficient to use in a spotlight. So that's the other con. And then the third con is, depending on which projector you get, it's a little expensive. Obviously the reason I do this method is because I already had a projector that I would use for like movie nights and stuff like that. So. I, was, I didn't have to pay any extra money to get it because I had already initially bought it. So if you guys already have a projector laying around, this is a really good method. But if you're gonna go out and buy a brand new one, you'll notice that getting a good projector is gonna cost you a little bit of money. And at that point, I would just say get a spotlight if you're only planning on using spotlights because although you can do a lot more with a projector uh, in terms of what you're projecting, 
you can get adapters and stuff like that for spotlights as well and i eventually want to get my own spotlight and show you guys the differences and like the side by sides so that's how i create my spotlight effect for any of you who were wondering if you guys have any questions on this method leave them in the comment section below like i said i'll always try and answer every single one of your comments make sure you also check out the links in the description i do have a couple of preset packs out that'll help you with the editing process as well as the digital asset packs and i'll be releasing more digital asset packs and some like moving asset packs and stuff like that and i'll obviously make more videos on why you should get those later but if you guys want to go ahead and get those links will be in the description below if you guys are curious on what kind of gear i have all of my gear is listed in the description below as always so thank you guys for watching make sure you subscribe and like it helps me out a ton and i will see you guys in the next one see ya